Welcome back. Today's topic is one that we're both eager to take a look at. Yes, we are. We are going to discuss male versus female leadership in China with an emphasis on the female aspect. Right. We have a few thousand years of history to look at mostly male leadership paradigms, so we figured devoting the majority of a humble podcast episode is quite literally the least that we could do in honor of lady leadership. So, what's so special about 2018 in this regard, Ying? Well, 2018 has been notable in terms of global female leadership being on the rise. We have been hearing about it as a hot topic since the beginning of the year, from Silicon Valley to China, and of course in many other countries also. But in 2018, China especially made big waves by openly discussing female leadership in society, which represents a real cultural shift. To best appreciate this from a Western perspective, where such conversations started happening a long time ago, it's important to remember the timeline of development here. Plus, consider the cultural imperatives at play, etc. We'll put a lot of information out there for you first, and then we'll get into all the actionable details. <laughs> Let's kick this off with a little historical perspective about the role of women in Chinese society. The founding father of the People's Republic, Mao Zedong, famously proclaimed that quote, "Women hold up half the sky." End quote. In 1954, the Constitution of the PRC was written to clearly state that women should enjoy equal rights as men. And as this isn't a history podcast per se, but more of a guide to how to understand and deal with things now, we're going to skip about six decades of excitement to get to the present day, where things are finally closer to meeting the philosophical ideals set down way back when. What's the reality today in terms of the leadership gender balance here, and how does that compare to the rest of the world, Ying? We have a lot of fun facts in this episode that might surprise people, and here is the first one. Chinese women, who make up 46% of the labor force in China, have achieved the highest proportion of the top management positions than in any other country. That's pretty badass. And at least in some companies, there's been a lot of support from their male counterparts. Jack Ma is on record extensively talking about how he feels that women contributed the most to Taobao's success. Now, in part, that's because the majority of shop owners and their staff who sell on Taobao are women. But he was also referring to the crucial roles played by top female managers and executives in his company. He's likewise made other very pro-female comments in public forums. He has. Last year, after the speech, he was asked what he would. Would prefer to come back as in the next life, a man again or a woman? Jack answered that he wanted to be a woman in his next life. Awesome. He also said he wanted to have two girls as children, and then they would make two good companies instead of one big company. Where does that idea come from? He explained that he felt that way because men like to grow a business to be the biggest, but women like to do business well. Women, in his opinion, are better suited to care for and tend a good business, regardless of size. Okay, all that about it being good is fine and probably the worthiest goal ethically, but it's a little hard to quantify. So let's look next at something we can measure: rich people. This is one demonstrable side effect of great success. And as many rich people as there are in China, the number of them who are women is our next. Awesome data point to share. There are about to be a lot of numbers flying around here, so you might want to grab either a notebook or a raincoat. It's very true that rich, powerful women are not uncommon in China. China is home to 49 of the world's 78 self-made female billionaires, according to the Huren Report, which tracks China's wealthiest people. Okay, I cheated and grabbed a calculator here, but that's 63 percent. So to put it another way, almost two in three female billionaires in the world are Chinese. What about the less wealthy but still rich ladies? How do mere multi-hundred millionaire Chinese women rank in the world totals? This is less lopsided than that last number, but it's no less impressive. Of the 1,893 individuals in China who currently have a net worth of 280 million U.S. dollars or higher, women makes up 28.7 percent of the total. So there's more room to grow there, but it helps show that women are making a big financial impact everywhere. To me, the number that is the most impressive is that 70 percent of the Chinese women on this list are self-made. They built up their fortune from scratch, not by inheritance. Wow, huh? It is very inspiring. But aside from money. Chinese women also dominate the ranks of the world's most successful women, as measured across several factors. Women claim the four out of the top five global spots. 
Yeah, although the money itself is a quantifiable metric like I was hoping for at the beginning of this show, it isn't the only marker of leadership, and it's maybe not even the best. What are some of the other ways distinctly female leadership is looked at here? Well, for one thing, not enough female business leaders cast themselves as champions of gender equality. When they do this, though, their impact can be felt widely. Many successful female entrepreneurs have said that a big part of the gender equality is awareness. It's important for younger women and girls, as well as boys and men, to see female leaders who are advanced in their careers succeeding. By being positive role models, they can inspire women throughout their own companies and in society as a whole. And to be sure, there are still some cultural factors to be reckoned with here and there, to say the least, such as a tendency to encourage fitting in and maintaining harmony. Being disruptive, quote-unquote, is not seen as a good thing in Chinese society, as history shows us time and again. And we aren't trying to whitewash the myriad problems that remain either, but we do want to shine a light on what's possible and show where the high water mark currently is, in hopes that we can encourage or even inspire an up-and-coming leader or two to add their own mark. So to help make this happen, we have an ask of you, the audience here. What do you think is a great approach to fostering this awareness? Please send us a comment, and we will discuss this more on social media and in future episodes. As one of the two girls in my family, and having been mostly raised by women in central China myself, this is a very personal topic to me. Yes. You know, we co-write and create all these shows together, so sometimes I'm speaking a thought first brought up by Ying Ying or vice versa. But before we go here, this is a perfect opportunity for me to pick the brain of Ying Ying specifically to get her personal views on female leadership. And how do you see Q to be a successful founder? What's CQ? Uh, culture intelligence. Very nice. Happy to share. Perfect. So Ying Ying, who is your female leadership role model? I think the answer will surprise people, but I kind of love it. Not that you need my patriarchal blessing or anything. <laughs> this is true. Okay, you ready for this? Ah,、uh, yeah, I'm sitting down. It's <sighs> Wonder Woman. Yay! Right on. But why her? I admire her as a character because she is mission driven and empathetic. She doesn't waste her blessings, but goes to war to save ordinary people's lives. She thinks bigger than herself, and I think that's how more women should think too. The sky is the limit for women in China. Most of the women here are hungry for more opportunities and knowledge. They desire to travel more, touch a soul or two. And give back to society in a small way or otherwise. Now, Chinese women do still need to overcome the barriers at work and in life that we've glossed over for the moment. These challenges can be quite significant, especially from a cultural perspective, such as reacting to existing power structures, especially where an old school male boss or superior is concerned. The issues of maintaining harmony and a fear of losing face make some people cling to those old ways. But the times they are a changing, as Bob Dylan said, oh so many years ago. So, what's the real impact that female leaders should be making in the? Real world, there are lots of things that can be done without being confrontational. Things like fostering awareness or working to solve societal problems such as gender inequality. Basically, anything that makes the world a better place overall will help benefit women too. Thinking for yourself and not simply absorbing expectations others have of you is a great place to start. You can do and be almost anything you want to be, even a man in some Western countries. But please, be a woman—just an empowered, inspiring, mind-blowingly accomplished woman. There are plenty of us dudes in the world already, and a huge gender imbalance in China. Think outside that old box. I'll go even one step further and say that why act like there is a box? True. After all, why should you allow yourself to be given a box to fit into? And who is suited to give you this box? Society, media, your parents. Why should you have to accept it? Great points. All great artists copy in others' paths at first, but to become truly great, you have to be your own person in all respects. Women with critical, independent, and deep thinking abilities will become the leaders we need the most in the future. And as men, our best role is to fully support the women and girls in our lives to be who and what they want to be. Boxes be damned. Thanks, Brendan. Thank you. Woo, it got a little.、Uh, what's my word there?、Uh, heavy today, but I think it was worth it. It's a heavy subject for sure, because it's very important, regardless of gender. It's mind, brain, heart of someone that matters the most. Without a balanced emphasis on all these things, we would be no different from animals. And when I'm this hungry, I hardly am. It's probably morning as you listen to this, but it's dinner time at the studio here, so we'll wrap it up with a reminder of our call to action earlier. Yes, please do write us with your thoughts here. We will include them in future shows, discuss on social media, etc., and also read, write us a review, or subscribe, or share the show if you 
like it. We're humbled and happy to see the five-star ratings we've been getting on iTunes so far, and the quotes and reviews have been great too. Please visit HowChinaWorksPodcast.com to add your voice to the mix, and we'll keep an eye out for you. I'm Brendan Davis. And I'm Yi. See you tomorrow for the week's last episode of How China Works. <laughs> <laughs>